Ooh, you know the drill by now. It's secrets of harmony of the seas. Yes, we're here in Cozumel, Cozumel, however you want to pronounce it. Yeah, got lots of secrets. Let's just jump right into it. First up, we have the non-smoking casino. It's all the same great fun of the casino, but now without smoke. They've been adding this to a lot of the ships, and I really enjoy it. Next up, we have the cabanas up on the pool deck. These are on the upper deck, and they were just added back in January of 2024. On our cruise, they weren't even completed, but these should be available now. They do cost to rent, so keep that in mind and check your prices. They can be fun, but you can see the location is not right next to the pool. The ultimate abyss is the dry slide that goes from the upper deck down to the boardwalk. Now, it's not a secret that it exists, but the time that you can go and it won't be so crowded is going to probably be later in the cruise. On the first day of the cruise, we found it to be very crowded, but by the end of the cruise, on like the next to last day or the last full day of the cruise, I was able to ride the slide multiple times, basically in a row. So keep that in mind that if you don't get to it right away, there will probably be times that it's much easier later in the cruise. It's a lot of fun, definitely worth checking out. When you ride the Ultimate Abyss down to the boardwalk, the carousel will be there. Now, it's not always open. It's usually open around the same time that the Ultimate Abyss is, but it's not always the same hours. The carousel tends to be open for more hours than the Ultimate Abyss. Be sure to ride it at night for a different type of experience. It's open to all ages, and remember, completely free. Before you pull out of port, be sure to look for dolphins in the area. We're always able to see quite a few when we're in Galveston, but we've seen them in other ports as well. We've even seen them from our room at the front of the ship on Harmony. I've got a whole video about the room we stayed in. Check out the card for more information about that. There'll be a link in the description and at the end of this video. If you want to see a really accurate model of Harmony of the Seas, head to the back of Deck 15. That's where they've been keeping the model lately. See how many details you can spot, and if you've got a room on the outside of the ship, see if you can find it. If you're looking for a less crowded coffee shop in the morning, check out the Vitality Cafe on Deck 6. They do accept the drink package, and you can get a lot of the drinks that you would be able to get anywhere else made with the same Starbucks coffee. It doesn't have a lot of snacks, but it does have drinks. And with the drink package, most of these are included. I believe the protein shakes end up costing more even if you have the drink package, but you'll have to check yourself on that. Looking for a little bit quieter of a place to eat outside on the ship? Check out Park Cafe in the middle of Central Park. They've got sandwiches, soups, a nice bagel bar in the morning, and a lot of other options. Park Cafe is complimentary and is a great place to start your cruise on when you first get on the ship and are looking for something to eat. To build an extreme ice cream sundae, your first stop is going to be the wind jammer to get ice cream. There are some toppings there, but you'll notice that chocolate sauce and whipped topping are shamefully missing. So head on over to the donut station where they have chocolate syrup, strawberry topping, and whipped cream. And you can craft your own amazing Royal Caribbean sundae. Completely free! Thinking about heading to Mini Bites? It's the place up on the pool deck that has some Mexican or Tex-Mex food. Well, you and everybody else are headed that way. There's not much seating, so you might be tempted to go grab a table before you get your food. However, this is absolutely not necessary. The line moves so slow that people will have eaten and left by the time you get through the line. So don't worry about that. While you're on the pool deck, make sure to get some ice cream. But you may have to check which side it's on because it does go back and forth from port to starboard. The biggest news of the past year or so on Royal Caribbean has been the new main dining room food. Some people love the changes, some people hate the changes, some people don't really notice many changes. I kind of like the theme nights. I think it helps make the menu a little bit more consistent and cohesive. Remember, you can order extra appetizers, mains, or desserts for free except for lobster on that one particular night and enjoy more than one item. So if you see something that you like and you see something else that you like, feel free to order both. You can always skip a course if you really don't want something from it. They will even customize your order a little bit within reason if there's something you want them to leave off, but I wouldn't count on it. The menus tend to show up a few days before your sailing in the Royal Caribbean app, so you can go through each day and see if there's something that's only available on that day and kind of plan out your menu for the week. For example, 
they only seem to have prime rib on the very first night of the cruise. So if you like prime rib like I do, you want to make sure that that's what you order on the first night because you probably won't see it again. Be sure to check the app for which night is lobster night so you don't make plans to go to a special restaurant or go to the Windjammer instead if lobster's your thing. I think everybody enjoys a little putt-putt mini golf every once in a while, but there's an issue with the course on Harmony of the Seas. It's not really with the course, it's with the little balls they give you. The golf balls they have are not really golf balls. I don't know what they are. They are golf ball shaped, but they are so light that they do not behave like a normal golf ball. So I would recommend actually bringing your own golf ball so that you can play and have some sense of how hard you should be hitting this thing. They are so light. They're almost like ping pong balls. And so you end up barely touching them and they just go flying. So if you want something a little more sturdy, a little more fun, bring your own golf ball. I know it sounds silly, but you'll probably enjoy it a lot more. And when someone asks why you brought your own, say, I heard about it on Cruising Secrets. Sometimes on Harmony of the Seas, the escape room is closed, so they do a puzzle game where you form into groups. I would say find a group of ragtag people and try to figure out what the puzzles are. You will need four or five people that can each work on puzzles independently. I won't give any spoilers away, but you might want to step back after you draw your lines. That's all I'll say. For the scavenger hunt, I can give you a few tips that I think will help you out. You need to go and pick up the scavenger hunt list on maybe the second day of the cruise. Definitely check all the activity lists and try to find it there. Once you have that, you will be going all over the ship for most of the cruise to find everything. There are a couple of tips though. One, if you go to the next cruise office, they will help you out quite a bit. They have a lot of this information. Those people have time. So just go by some time when they're not busy and ask about some of the names after you've done all the easy ones. The entertainment staff, they're actually looking for only a specific group that's called entertainment staff. So these are not all the performers. You don't need to worry about getting every single person that works on the ship autograph, just the entertainment staff. If possible, go to the top tier crown and anchor event. This is where a lot of the key staff show up and you can get selfies with them, which are part of the scavenger hunt activities, and you can get autographs if you need them. It's a really great way to make the list. And if the weather cooperates, you'll be able to see them dive into the 17.9 foot deep pool that exists at the back of Harmony. Our list asked for the home country of the piano player that roams around the ship. Barney was from England, but you might need to ask your piano player where they're from. You won't need to visit all 2,747 staterooms on board to complete the list, but it will keep you busy, so ask around and work on it throughout the week. By far, the hardest task to complete was winning a prize at any trivia, so you may want to try winning prizes on the first day. No one that I saw turn in a scavenger hunt list won any prize at another trivia. So that would get you a few extra points that may put you in the lead, and you might win a medal like I did. There are a lot of great shows on the promenade, and if you want the absolute best viewing spot, you need to stand right in front of the stage that they MC those shows from and stand under that light post. It gives you something to lean against, and it's right on the border of where you're allowed to stand. It's center stage for where the activity happens, and so you'll be able to see everything really well from this location. Get there a few minutes early so that you make sure to claim your spot. And if you see other Cruising Secrets enthusiasts there, say hi. The shows can be a little silly, but the one about all the holidays is a lot of fun, and the costumes are great. Many of the people that you see performing in these promenade shows also perform in Grease the Musical, which they do a few times during the week in the main theater. Yes, it's the full musical production all the numbers, there's lots of props, costumes, stage changes. It's really impressive. Be sure to check it out. But it's not my favorite show on board. The ice shows they have on board are really impressive. They have better costumes, props, and storylines than I've seen on a lot of the other Royal Caribbean ships. And of course, the ice dancers are great. They're the same people that will be helping you get into your skates if you decide to go ice skating earlier in the week. I can't remember the last time someone told me they went to an ice show when they were on land, but I will say that going to see an ice show on a Royal Caribbean ship is amazing and it's great because you're so close to it. I don't see how you would ever be this close to these ice skaters at a show on land. 
especially for free, remember this is all included, start looking in the app about a month before you're sailing to see if any of the shows are available to book. You're not booking specific seats, you're really just booking a general admission, so you still want to get there early for the show so that you can get a good seat. Not that there's really a bad seat, but getting down close is pretty nice. I would say don't get in the second row on the sides. Due to how they've built these theaters, the second row is just not much higher than the first row, and so you end up looking at the back of a lot of people's heads. So I would say first row or third row or higher on the sides, but avoid that second row. I know it's kind of weird, but I've experienced it on multiple ships. If the ship is particularly rocky, they will have to reschedule the shows or cancel the shows, and so you want to try to book these as soon as possible in the cruise so that if something happens and it gets rescheduled, there's still time left. There are always people that they reserve the very last showing and then something happens and they have to cancel it. And so you end up not being able to see the show at all. So go as soon as you can. There is a second ice skating show called Ice Skate. And I don't know if I enjoyed it quite as much. It's a little more free form. It was still fun to watch. And if you like the ice skating, I would always recommend going to it. So definitely check out 1887 and then go to Ice Skate if you enjoy it and you have time for it. The water show on Harmony of the Seas is called The Fine Line, and while it can be pretty impressive, there was a lot more splashing and pounding, it's kind of a stomp, clomp, that kind of show, and I didn't enjoy that as much. Now, the aerial work and the slack lining and the high wire stuff, all amazing, but it wasn't really a diving show with any of those, so I don't really know exactly what they were going for here. It's really neat to see, though, so... It's not like it's a bad thing. You will get dripped on by these aerialists, as you can see, so that's kind of fun. Be prepared to get wet if you go to the aqua show, or sit in the back, and you'll probably stay dry. There's always some diving, not necessarily a lot of diving, but it was okay. These guys are still way braver than I am. If you are sitting off to the side and underneath some of the covered areas, you might not be able to see the high wire act directly. They do video it and show it on a screen so that you can see a lot of what's happening, but you're not actually looking directly at the person. So if anything, I would sit on the right side of the seats so that you could look up because I believe the high wire act is kind of up on the upper left side. If you can be out in the open area and not be under any overhangs, that's really the ideal situation. The biggest surprise that we had going on Harmony of the Seas was seeing Columbus the Musical. It sounded kind of quirky and a little silly, but I wasn't expecting too much. We sat just a few rows back, right behind all the reserved seats, and it was a great view. I cannot overemphasize how funny it was. And the costumes were great, the singing was great, the songs were great. There weren't a lot of original songs, but there were a few. And the classics that they brought in, I think, were ones that everyone really enjoyed. It was great to see the cast of Grease all mixed up with the same people playing different characters. It was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. My wife wasn't too excited about it when I dragged her to see it for the first show, but the stage is amazing and she was blown away and really, really enjoyed it. We ended up going back to watch it a second time just because we enjoyed it that much. Again, this is one you'll want to make reservations for and really need to make reservations for if you want to see it. So start checking the app about a month before you're sailing. On our sailing, they even showed The Wizard of Oz in the theater, which is a really neat experience because I've never seen it on a screen that big. I'd be remiss to not talk about the staff on Royal Caribbean ships, and on Harmony of the Seas, they were the classic great staff that I've come to enjoy with every single sailing. Lots of fun to hang out with and talk to. They will answer lots of questions, anything that you might ask about Royal Caribbean, how things work. They're just great. Our cruise director was actually the one that was on board the ship that had the secret cat on board. If you Google Royal Caribbean Cat Stowaway, you can find that whole story. So he told us some more secrets, and I think I'll have to share those another time. Now let's talk about a few quiet places on Harmony of the Seas. These are places that will offer you a relaxing getaway while on board. We start with Central Park. It's a lush, green environment that has seating all throughout. Relaxing, peaceful music will be performed in the evenings most nights, and it can be a great place to just sit and relax and read, and during the day, it's often very quiet. 
Just watch out for kids looking for those stupid rubber ducks. The birds you hear chirping are likely fake, but it's always possible there's a stowaway. Be careful and enjoy the quiet relaxation of Central Park. Looking for a place with quiet views of the ocean? Head up to deck 15 to the front of the ship to the solarium, down the stairs, putting you on deck 14, and off to the port side or left as you're facing forward. And what you'll notice is a little area that extends out on the side of the ship, giving you a very clear 270 degree view of the ocean. This front little notch that sticks out is called The King of the World. I believe it's referencing a popular movie from the 90s. From here you can get great views of the port side of the ship, whether in transit or stopped in port. Since it's an adult-only area, it's unlikely to be filled with rambunctious children. We found the rest of the solarium to also be very quiet, especially at night. It seems like most people are off doing more exciting things than sitting quietly on the ship, and so the solarium is actually a great place to relax if you want to just read a book or enjoy the sounds of the ocean. Even the promenade can be quiet on most nights, especially as you get later in the cruise. People are at dinner or a show or the casino, or maybe just back in their room. But you can find a lot of quiet areas on board in the evenings. The Seven of Hearts card room can be found on the back of deck 14. Remember, seven times two is 14. And here you can find a nice place to play with your friends that's a little less hectic than some of the other areas on board. If you'd like to donate a book for the library, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Or feel free to borrow one. I'm sure there are lots of other quiet places on board, and every cruise can be a little different. So just look around, and you'll find a quiet spot. Now let's get back to the louder tips. It's not really a secret, but the walls of a cruise ship cabin are all metal right underneath. And so you can take magnetic trays like this and add shelves to your bathroom. I found this to be one of the greatest hacks that I found in recent years for a cruise ship. And so I wanted to show everybody these. You can find an affiliate link in the description below. I learned about these from Living Phase 2, but I have my own list of crazy things to bring on a cruise to improve your experience in your cabin and the rest of the cruise. Check out that video or videos here. I'll link to as many of them as I can. Share your secrets in the comments below, and we'll secret you later.